Today's quote of the day comes from Socrates. I have an app on my phone that gives me messages each day from the ancient Greeks. Not because I don't have friends, I do have friends, but I do love receiving these little messages. They just pop up on my thingy and give me a little burst of wisdom. I love it so much. So the quote is by Socrates and it says, the highest realms of thought are impossible to reach without first attaining an understanding of compassion. So today I want to talk you through this quote. If you're interested in learning more about compassion in action, then stick around. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today's video is based on the quote that I read out at the start. I'll take you through it again. I'm probably going to re-quote this many times through the video because it's such a lovely statement. It's by Socrates. The highest realms of thought are impossible to reach without first attaining an understanding of compassion. Such a great quote. And as it popped up on my phone this morning, it really captured my imagination. And I thought, you know what? I can do something with this. I, there's a little video here, I just know it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna design this video in, in mind of people who are currently experiencing kind of feelings of um, you know, anger and rage and hatred towards the leadership of the moment. I totally understand, I get it. I have felt it, um, you know, I, I really, really, really get it. And I think it's important that we look at it and we look at how it's actually, it's not too hard to let it go. We can do this because we've done it before many times. We have let go of our anger and hatred and rage or whatever it is. We have, we have achieved that in our life too. We need to be reminded of the times when we've done it, right? The times when we know we, we know exactly um, how to be in the highest realms of thought. We know exactly uh, how to use compassion to get to those lovely places of thought, and um, you know, and not dip down into those lower emotions. So, in order to illustrate this, I've got a couple of examples. The first example, well. There's a story here. I'm just putting this together as I go along. I've got a rough idea in my mind. It's a journey. Come with me. It's going to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to give the example of a family. I'm going to draw a diagram. One of my big fancy diagrams. We're going to have a dad. We're going to have a mum. And we're going to have you. Let's see, you're here. It's a family, look at that. Aren't they happy? Don't they look fantastic? Don't they look like they're really going places in life? They do, right? Wonderful. Now, that's you, you're six years old. And you have a little sibling who's very cute and looks like this and is three years old. You're double their age, right? You're double their age, you're double the intelligence, you're double the everything, you're double the compassion and thought and all that wonderful stuff, right? You know it, all of you know it, you're all terrific. Now you're all going to the beach, okay? It's exciting, really very exciting. You know you're gonna make sand castles. You know you're gonna have the time of life, but little one over here, little sibling, and I, I don't have a little sibling, so I'm really, you know, I'm doing some fiction here, but um, I, I was this little one, I think. Little one is, is very angry and upset and doesn't wanna go and is frustrated and tired and screaming and, and being a bit mental really and, um, and annoying and doesn't want to go to the beach, okay? So what do all of you do? Because you're all a family, you see, and you know that in order to go to the beach, you all have to go together. Some of you have already clocked where I'm going with this, but stay with me. All right. You know that to go to the beach, all of you have to go together, but little one doesn't want to go, little one's crying, 
So the three of you are really good. You're all lovely. You're all in the, the highest realms of thought. You know, that, that Socrates says here are impossible to reach without first attaining an understanding of compassion. All of you have an understanding. You know what it's like to be three years old. You know what it's like to be frustrated, to be angry. Little one can't tie her shoelaces and she's upset. And the three of you understand. The three of you are in those higher realms of thought. And the three of you sit with her and you give her a little hug, but that's not working. Um, you know, and what you figure out is that she, she just wants some attention. She wants education, actually. She wants to be taught how to do the shoelaces perfectly. And you figure that out. You end up teaching her. You give her the knowledge and the wisdom because you're up in those highest realms of thought. And you're able to help her out. And then all of you go to the beach. Okay? Now, how am I doing on time? This is going very quickly. Um, I like to elaborate in my stories, don't I? All right. Now, what you don't do is the three of you don't just go to the beach, right? And forget about her. You don't do that. You don't abandon her. You don't lock her in the house. You don't scream at her. You don't, you don't do any of that, right? You figure it out and all of you go to the beach together, okay? We like that. That's how it should be. And you know that in your consciousness, you know that that's the right way, that that's the thing because this is a family. And in a family, you know that, well, the other thing is that you know that you're all stronger together. The other thing is that you know the principle of all is one, right? The Saturnian principle of all is one. You know that. You know that all is one. That this is one family. And if we go to the beach, we all go together, right? So you know that. And you know that we evolve together, right? We evolve together. You go to the beach together. Not one that, you don't have one of you just locked up far away somewhere, and, right? So we know that. Where am I going with this? All right, now I want you to picture um, someone in the human family, because this is all one big family, right? All eight billion of us, or however many there are. I don't even know. I should probably Google that, actually. Let me just see. Yeah, 7.8 billion, that looks like. So th there's a big family, okay? And we've got some interesting people in the family that we don't like, <laughs> or that we're annoyed by, or who's kicking up a stink and, you know, and I'll, I'll, let me draw somebody that, that kind of annoys me these days, and I've sort of talked about this on the channel before, and, you know, this person has glasses, going to draw the glasses on, this person is a billionaire, you know, this person um, loves technology, all that kind of thing. Let's call him Mr. G, okay? Not to be confused with Mr. G, no, not that, Mr. G, okay? This is the person that I'm picking for my example of who am I annoyed at or what, you know, leadership do I just look at and think, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Whatever, right? This is my three-year-old who wants everybody to have perfect shoelaces, right? In the world, that's, that's his idea of what he wants or whatever, whatever it is, right? Now you can substitute this person for somebody that you can't stand. And that might be Donald Trump, it might be Boris Johnson, it might be um, Scott Morrison, it might be Narendra Modi, it might be Fauci, I don't know, pick a person, right? There are a lot of people that you can choose from right now. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but they are out there. And I'm telling you now, I come back to this quote where we have to think about these highest realms of thought are impossible to reach without first attaining an understanding of compassion. Okay. And as I say, this is my three-year-old 
small sibling who, I don't know how many lifetimes he's had on the planet. I don't even know how many lifetimes I've had. The other thing is, all right, I don't even know if I'm right. I could be wrong. This person could be a saint for all I know. He could be doing the right thing. Because here are some things that I know. You know, I know that I don't know where I came from before this incarnation. I don't know where I'm going in the next one. These are facts, right? Um, these are the highest realms of thought, you see? And I'm using compassion to look at these thoughts. I'm going, okay, well, what, what is the truth, right? Courage, 200. I'm stepping out of anger, 150. Because quite frankly, if I stay here, anger towards this person or any other person, what it does is it drains me of power. I lose power. And as I lose power, I rinse my own body. You know, I create blood pressure or problems or, um, you know, I can be sick if I live in these lower emotions. Also, life will have a washing machine effect, keep cycling through the same old rubbish thoughts, all the, all the anger, all the hatred. I'm not going anywhere by cycling through these emotions. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm self-abandoning. Ban. Oh, that's a long word to write. Abandonment. How about we do that? Self-abandonment. I'm abandoning myself down here. If I'm just hanging out in anger and I'm rinsing my body and I'm screwing up my blood pressure and I'm doing all of that. And the other thing is my life is being neglected, right? There might be some mold on the ceiling that I really should be cleaning, you know, <laughs> or maybe there's an Instagram post I need to create, or maybe there's you know, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of things I need to do. I've got a long to-do list, right? And I need energy for that. So instead, I want to reach the highest realms of thought that Socrates talks about. The highest realms of thought are impossible to reach without first attaining an understanding of compassion. So I've got the courage to look at the fact that, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't even know this person. Never met him. Don't know him. I don't know how many lifetimes he's had before exactly what you're supposed to do. I mean, sure, I can look at an astrological chart and I can tell you a story, but I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is that there's a lot I don't know. Okay, now there's acceptance as well. Acceptance 350. So if I have some compassion, I can, I can come up here and I can accept, um, I can accept a lot of things. I can accept that, you know, he's got his karma and his work to do and his life. And that's very different to mine. When I'm up here and I'm using compassion to go higher, I, I can accept a lot of things and I'll have energy to do my life. I'll have energy to build myself. I'll have energy to clean the mold on the ceiling or make the video or, you know, whatever it is, right? And if I'm really go on strong on the compassion I can come up here to peace 600 and this is you know is the David Hawkins scale right so if I'm going strong on the compassion I'm telling you what I'm having a good time I'm having a really good time okay um, I accept I can accept the fact that I can't teach this you know with the three-year-old with the beach I was able to teach the three-year-old how to tie the shoelaces she, she wanted me to help right in that instance this person doesn't know me probably would think i'm stupid because i believe in astrology right you know all that stuff right and that's fine i accept that i accept it it's cool you have whatever beliefs you want mr g and you know i'm free you're you're free up here it's you're free and i'm free and i'm free to be myself i'm free to do what i want I'm free to get on i'm free to be peaceful I'm free to create good things, put good things out into the world. Um, you know, I'm free, I'm peaceful, I'm able to look back on my day and be really satisfied with it, you know. Um, and I'm not here in anger and I'm not doing the self-abandonment thing. No, I'm not doing that. 
So guys, look, 15 minutes. I didn't expect this one to be so long, but I hope it's been useful. I hope it's offered you a way to recontextualize uh, perhaps some of your own emotions if you're going through any of this stuff. You know, we all, all is one. Remember that Saturnian principle, all is one. Also remember that it's natural. It's natural to feel anger, hatred, annoyance, frustration, any of these things is natural. I feel them. You bet I do. I don't even need a world leader. I get annoyed. There's a pot in our kitchen that has this lead handle that's really heavy. It drives me crazy. I want to throw it out the window. But what I do is I just kind of get annoyed and I, I allow the emotion to run through me. I picture myself throwing it out the window and then it's released. I don't then need to do it. I can just clean it and put it away. And do you know what? Now, what I've observed lately is that other pots in the kitchen are now more available. I, I never see that one anymore. <laughs> my mum will watch this and think, oh my God, I didn't realise she was that angry at that pot. But I really am. And I don't know, but it's, it's, it's funny. I've let all those emotions go through. And now I don't attract that pot anymore. It doesn't come on my path. It's so funny. Anyway, I just wanted to share that example with you to say that you don't even need a person to be annoyed or angry or, and that these emotions are natural. Don't condemn yourself for having them. It's, we come to earth for this. You know, when we go back, it's all bliss. And after a lot of that, I've heard that gets boring. People want to shake things up and, um, you know, yeah, Earth School is good to shake things up, isn't it? There's a lot of variety here, right? So guys, that is my quote of the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful or practical or added some value to your life. Um, please leave me a comment or subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.